Last time we had got to the point where we were collecting some analog data here and we were succeeding in smoothing it and printing it out. And it was printing out really quickly, about once every three and a half milliseconds. So that's coming out really fast. One of the reasons it's coming out pretty fast is because we've got this speed for our serial port quite high. Most of the time that it's taking to do this is being taken up by the serial port speed, the time it takes to actually send this stuff to the, to the serial port. So let's just check on that. Let's change our speed from uh, 115 uh, 200 down to 9600. Quite a bit slower. And I'll run that. And when I run that, I should see things coming up more slowly. I'm not seeing anything coming out. How come? I've got a speed mismatch here. I've got 9600 set there. I've got 115 200 set here. So let's make that 9600 to match. And now I actually see some data coming out. And I cut the speed of the port by a factor of more than 10. And where I was taking about three and a half milliseconds before, I'm now taking about 44 or 45 milliseconds. So things are going a lot more slowly. So that pretty much convinces me that the serial port speed is a big factor here. So let's stick with a fairly high serial port speed. Let's stick with the 115-200 that we're used to. And let's try to not print so often so that most of the time we can get through this loop even faster than, than 3.5 milliseconds. So down here I made this smoothing value a static float so that it would be saved between times that we went through the loop. So I'd like to declare another static variable so that I can keep track of how long it's been since I printed. So right down here, let's have a static unsigned long, oops, doesn't look like I spelled that right. So it's going to be static so it keeps the value. It's going to be unsigned long so that it can hold a microsecond timing value. And we'll call it last print. So that'll be the microseconds value from last time that it printed. And initially I'll set it equal to zero because it has never printed. And now if the difference between time now and last print is big enough, then I'll print some stuff out, otherwise I won't. So I'd like it to be uh, greater than or equal to 0.1 seconds. And I'll put a closed curly brace down there. If I run that, oh, hang on. This is always going to be greater than 0.1 because this is a number in microseconds. So I'll have to turn that into a number in seconds. And I'm going to lose some precision there, but I think it'll be okay because all I'm trying to do is keep track of about how often I should print. So I'll divide that by a million. I've seen before that if I want to get this right, it needs to be a floating point number so that it will actually do the floating point division. And so if I run that, that should, it's still printing it out every time. Well, what is last print? If I don't know what's going on, I should always just print things out and see if I can find out what's going on. Last print is always equal to zero over here. So I need to make sure that when I go through the if statement, when I actually go to print it out, I keep track of the fact that I printed it out. So last print equals time now 
if I actually go through and do the printing. And that should solve the problem. Okay, and now it's going through and it's printing it out only about 10 times a second. So that's about what I was expecting it to do. That was what I wanted it to do, not print as often as it's going through the loop. Now, a couple of things I'd like you to notice here. I kind of screwed up because I got my indentation wrong. So I'm going to press Command-T or Control-T. Now I can see really clearly what's inside this if statement and what's outside the if statement. In addition, I really don't need to print out last print anymore. Command slash comments it out. I might not even need that wait. Command slash comments it out. So I can comment things out quickly. And now I can run this and print it out. So now I should only see the stuff that I'm interested in seeing. And that is the time now in seconds, the digital value that I read in, the analog value that I read in, it's an integer value, the DT. It was about 3,000 and something before. It's down to 240. So it's only taking 240 microseconds to go around this loop right before it prints because that's it goes through, it does all the calculations, skips over this, and then the next time it comes through and prints. So that really once again shows us that the vast majority of the time that it was taking last time through the loop was all about the printing and not about the reading data and doing calculations. So we're getting smooth values of our input value here from our exponential smoothing. We're getting through the loop about four times every millisecond, so at about four kilohertz, 4,000 times a second we're getting around our control loop. So that means we could respond really quickly to what's going on as long as we didn't have to print it out here on the serial port. So now we've got a, a bunch of things that we can do. We can get our data, we can smooth our data, we can print it out at a printout time that's independent of how quickly we're gathering data and we can uh, then copy that and draw some graphs with it. So now we've got a pretty fully functioning uh, calculation system uh, that allows us to make our measurements, get our data, and keep track of exactly what's going on. We don't need this delay function anymore in our code, and we're, we can control all of the elements by keeping track of time. So that's good. And this will provide a really good starting place for a lot of the coding that you'll do uh, in this course to gather data with Arduino.